Okay, we're at the Vaux Fidelity, another one of my Brooklyn neighbours. Let's go in. Hi, Mike. Hey, hi, John. I'm from Storm Hi, how are you doing? doing? Hi, Janet. Hi, John. Hey, John. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So, you've got new speakers, it looks like. Yes. Yeah, come on in. Yeah, thanks. Let me turn down the music. Uh, these are Gibbon Super 9s. Uh, they are the only the second speaker to use the tweeter mm -hmm. we developed in the Gibbon 10. In the 10. Uh, and that's kind of the basis on what these uh, are all about. We're trying to get uh, as much of the performance of the Gibbon 10s, big full range um, performance, but in a much smaller package. Well, the 10s are three way. Is this a three way? No, this is a two and a half way. Uh, so the woofers are. Uh, playing together in the low bass, mm -hmm. and then the bottom woofer starts to roll off um, first, and then the the upper woofer takes it all the way up to the mid range into the tweeter. Yeah, it's, that's easy to say and, but, and do from my experience. That um, yeah. some two and a half ways never get the integration right. So yeah. easier than a three way, in my opinion. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, in three way, you know, where do you put the crossover between? That's between the, the drivers. Yeah. So the crossover goes between the tweeter and the mid-range and then the... <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah, it's I where, where musically do you put it? Where do you uh, put it so it has the least effect on the music? Right. So, well, so, so what are they going to cost? Uh, these are 9900 a pair. Okay, so not, not dissimilar from what you charge for the Orang 093, but that's a very yeah. different kind of speaker. Yes, yeah. The 093s are 8400 a pair. But the orangutan series is a more optimized for a lower power tubes, yeah. higher, um, they've got a much higher impedance, higher right. sensitivity, uh, and the higher impedance makes them not, maybe not quite as universally um, applicable, with okay. some amplifiers just don't like the higher impedance. Right. Uh, the Gibbon series is all very uh, flat, linear, 8 ohm impedance, uh, high but not as high uh, sensitivity, right. so these are 91 dB. Now I see, you know, okay, that would be better suited to solid state, but you're damming them with, what, VTL tubes? Yeah, these are the VTL uh, MB185 monoblocks. Uh, I love these amps. Uh, some of my favorite uh, amps to power the, the Gibbon series with. Mm -hmm. um, and then the preamp is also a VTL. Uh, that's the 5.5 preamp, all, all right. Yes. I think we reviewed that pretty favorably. Mm -hmm. And that's for total DAC, right? Yeah, so that's my total DAC. Uh, so the digital stream is uh, files on my MacBook. Mm -hmm. uh, software is Rune, and then we're running USB into the total DAC, mm -hmm. and that's... And for analog, I don't recognize the turntable. Uh, this is a Vertier. So this is the Nouvelle Vertier, yeah. uh, which is their smaller of the two tables they make, and uh, EMT, tone arm, and cartridge. Oh, so, well. Let's listen to the speakers. Excellent. Yeah, have a seat. Thank you. It's all right. I said it's all right. Said it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right.
Okay, well, thanks very much, John. Very interesting on the organ. The speakers had more low bass than I was expecting. What is the port tune to? Uh, it's tuned to about 31 hertz, oh. so it's low. Yeah. Uh, and in most rooms, you should be getting some into the 20s, but uh, in here, I'm, I'm thinking that we get pretty strong down to 30. Yeah, so, but there's yeah. plenty of grunt there. Thanks. Thank yeah, you. For, for what is a relatively small speaker. That was a huge part of the design. Was yeah. really to compress, again, to compress what I was doing in the given tens into a, a much smaller package. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to finish up by asking you a question about CES because you know you've been a long-term exhibitor, mm -hmm. and you're one of the few exhibitors who are still exhibiting mm -hmm. at this shrunken 2018 show. So, ha has it been good for you? Are you getting the traffic you want? Yes, uh, this year better traffic than last year. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, my feeling, uh, I mean, clearly now that it's all compressed to one floor, yeah. the people that have been naysayers for years are kind of getting their way. And uh, I, would, I would not be surprised if there was no hi-fi mm -hmm. uh, next year. But uh, the reason, in my opinion, the reason that's a great pity is because this is the only show in the U.S. that attracts international distributors. Right. Um, and when this show is gone, the next choice, then you're going to have to do Munich, which is a much more expensive proposition, at least if you're a U.S.-based manufacturer. Yeah. So I'm going to be sad to see the hi-fi part of CES yeah. go away, uh, and I like it. I always, I always get. Uh, it's it's not just about getting traffic, but it's I've I've seen you know a bunch of distributors. I see uh, some of my dealers that I never see at any of the other mm -hmm. shows. You know, it's not it's not the kind of show that can be replaced by a Rocky Mountain or something right. like that. It's right. a very different. Kind yeah, because this is a business show where you're also making sound. Exactly. The other shows are about making sound where perhaps we'll do some business. Yeah, for end, for end users, yeah. Yes. This is a show, and, and, and the reason we see international traffic here is because it's CES. It's because they can come, they go to Vegas, they have fun, they do whatever they want, but there's also the convention center. Yeah. And so I, I, I'm sure that's a huge, yeah. a huge draw. So, yeah, yeah, I'll be sad to see it go. Okay. Well, thanks very much, John. Sure. Yeah, my pleasure. Yes. It was a pleasure listening to my recordings on your system. Thanks. Enjoy Thanks. the rest of the show. Okay. Thank you. Interesting system. Did you notice that John had set up the system diagonally across the room instead of firing straight, which is some of the most of the average exhibitors do? So this is John has a background in retail, and so he has a lot of experience in getting systems to work in rooms which may not necessarily be the most promising. Uh, speakers were, were sounded good, sweeter sound than we've experienced in other rooms of the show. Um, good bass extension, as I was saying, on the organ recording. Um, a little less ambience um, audible on the uh, Eric Whittaker Water Nights track. Um, good vocal, good palpable vocal presentation on the Countess um, Curtis Mayfield transcription. So, yeah, that was a good room to spend some time in. Hi, I'm standing here with Gabby Renfeld from Crystal Cable and Siltec in a suite at the Mirage. In previous years, Crystal Cable and Siltec have been exhibiting at the Venetian as part of the regular CES, but this year she's at the Mirage in a private suite. No active demonstrations other than a portable setup with the new Crystal portable cables. So is that working for you, Gabby? Yes, we are very happy to be here, uh, no regrets. We were thinking a long time, uh, like all other manufacturers, mm -hmm. uh, colleagues uh, around the world, and decided to come for a shorter and smaller uh, setup here, and are happy to, uh, uh, to get uh, here uh, our, uh, our uh, friends from press and uh, dealers, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of time to mm -hmm. explain. We have much more uh, conversations, mm -hmm. uh, deeper, uh, deeper uh, explanations and trainings. So we are happy to, to do it this way uh, this uh, year. And you're getting the traffic you need from dealers and distributors? Yes, we, we work on appointment, yeah. so it was a little bit of work ahead, but we have, we have perfect time and uh, nice conversations. Well, thank you, Gail. Thank you for coming. Well, CES is, uh, oh, oh, CES is great now. I'm at the Oxygen Bar and we're talking about what's going on. Uh, there's uh, a lot of headphone stuff here. It's changed over the last few years because used to be with the uh, Beats by Dre, it was everywhere. Now it's not quite so much. Uh, 
companies are starting to be a little more kind of real about the actual stuff you need. Little cable kits with balance connectors in there and um, uh, inexpensive headphones that are sounding Great. better and you know, not millions of headphones with celebrity stuff and weird marketing things. So it's 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 interesting. I think uh, headphones. I think they're getting a little more serious um, about headphones uh, um, and, and real. I think it matches better what enthusiasts think about headphones than it did before. Certainly, not the whole basketball player celebrity thing that it was, which is great. So it's 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 an interesting year this year. There's good good stuff starting to actually appear. Solid, real stuff. Well, where'd you grow so up? it's been interesting. We're at the Mirage Hotel, and we've worked our way up to the penthouse level, where we're looking for DCS and D'Agostino. And by the sign, it looks like we found the room, Jason. So shall we go in? Let's. Hi guys. Hi, Hi man. John. Welcome. Pleasure. Hello, we found man. your room. Happy New Year. Yes. Thank you. Right. So, what Please. have you got set up for us? Make yourselves comfortable. Well, I'll go first. Here's the, here's the momentum for you. Uh, it just started shipping. It uh, retails for twenty-two thousand. It has an optional DAC plug-in for forty-five. Uh, it uses a Bluetooth remote. Uh huh. And. Um, it's got a couple zones on it, so you can switch between two different zones. Um, and then uh, the momentum stereo amplifier is, uh, excuse me, the progression stereo amplifier is the mate to it, and that's also $22,000, and that's 300 watts into eight, and it doubles all the way down to two ohms. And the one thing I want to ask you um, briefly is, these are totally new designs, correct? Totally. And you didn't do anything like this when you were at Crow. No, nothing like this was at Crow. So you, you, were they in your head at the time, but there was no way to implement them? Or? Uh, yeah, I have to say that, that sitting with nothing to do for a little while, you know, energized my brain into doing the stuff that I used to think about and never did, and that's what this stuff is. Great, great. And John, Yes. tell okay. us about this gorgeous hunk over yeah. here. So uh, in the room here, we're showing the limited production uh, Vivaldi 1. Uh, it's a celebration of our 30th anniversary. Uh, effectively combines the Vivaldi transport DAC uh, clock and probably more the network bridge than the upsampler all in one box. Uh, so out of the 250 that we're making worldwide, about half of them are sold already. We started shipping them in, in, uh, in September. Uh, the list price is 80,000 US and uh, that's for our standard silver or black anodized and we're doing some special finishes including automotive paints and, uh, and metal plating. Uh, this happens to be plated in bright nickel, and wow. this is a 15% upcharge uh, for this finish. Um, so uh, it plays CDs and SACDs. It has all of the network connectivity and functionality of the network bridge and the Rossini. Uh, it's a Rune Ready endpoint. Uh, it's now processing MQA, so that's finishing and that's certification. That's just brand new. That's brand new. Yeah, that's we're steadily working our way through the entire range. So the Rossini was first. This is next, and the bridge and the Vivaldi will follow. Uh, Vivaldi separates will follow. So the rest of the system, uh -huh. uh, we, we, uh, we're using uh, equipment supports from uh, Harmonic Resolution Systems, or HRS. This is their VXR, their new flagship uh, support system. Mm -hmm. And all of the cabling and the power conditioning is from Transparent Audio. We're using Reference XL interconnects and speaker cables and a new reference power isolator. So, and uh, the loudspeakers, if you can follow me this way, Janet. Uh, the loudspeakers are, uh, this is a satin black pair of uh, Sasha 2, the Wilson Audio Sasha 2. And it did Brian Burdan of Audio yes, Elements? Yes, yes, and customer? yeah, we are uh, very fortunate to have the help of uh, our dealer, uh, Brian Burdan from yeah. Audio Element. Who's uh, really with kind of, setup. he yeah. is, as many people are, a setup genius. Thank you, yeah. Do you, and you usually, Wilson's a wire with transparent, so it's, very, it's often that you you do stuff with transparent. Yeah, yeah. All, all the companies actually design equipment using, we, we all use each other's gear. So we have a pair of momentum stereo amplifiers in the factory, as do transparent. Dan owns a Vivaldi DAC. Um, and uh, the folks at Wilson use Dan's amplifiers and DCS in their factory. Right. And did, transparent cable. Did you add this all up? Do you know what the total price is? I uh, know. 
No, but it's but it's far less expensive than in the past. So um, oh. yeah, uh, I should have done that, but no, I did not. Cool. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, John. So Pleasure. maybe we should do some listening. Definitely yeah. do some listening. Yes. Okay. Yeah, whatever you like. <laughs> It's all right. The bow bow. I said it's all right. The bow bow. Said it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Whoa, it's all right. Now we're gonna move real slow. The bow bow. Because the lights are low. The bow bow. When you move it slow, it feels like more. Cause it's alright, oh it's alright You got to listen to the beat Okay. Well, that was that was pretty interesting. I thought the sound of that system worked really well. Given that these rooms in the Mirage are so asymmetrical, yet they seem to work with the system. And given what I heard of sound yesterday in rooms, big and small, I mean, this was like in a completely different level. Yeah. I mean, listening to the choral recordings of mine, the sound stage was perfect. Um, everybody was in the right position. The tonality was correct. The image was stable. Um, and I, 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 the, one of the things that struck me was the transparency. Mm -hmm. And then the extra transparency and the extra, we are right there with the MQA. That's right. We played an MQA version of, of one of my recordings as well as for straight PCM. And despite MQA being so controversial, it does seem to produce an improvement in sound quality. Yeah, and you know, different, you know, it, I was very convinced of the implementation of MQA. This is in the, in the DCS in the DC, one. Yeah, because I, I, I heard it in various pieces of equipment, and some equipment I think the implementation is more convincing and the, the difference between MQA and non-MQA is greater. And here it was just very noticeable. Yeah. Well, and on the organ recording, there was a plenty of deep bass and um, plenty of power. I, I, I was impressed. Hi, Jana. Well, that's the end of CES 2018 for us. It was a surprisingly upbeat show, considering all the stories of doom and gloom that were published about it, including in Sterophile. But everyone we speak to, spoke to seemed to be having a good time. They got good traffic, some people making very good sound. So, although some of the people we spoke to said, well, we're not sure if there'll be a show next year, I don't know. It, the show serves a purpose. It's a business-to-business -business show. And if people who are exhibiting here did the business they needed, that's a good sign. So, the show is over, and now it's time for a beer. <laughs> <laughs>